is part two of our conversation with Steve Hackett. By the way, what was your relationship with uh, with Tony? Like someone had asked that because when I talked to David Henschel, uh, David had said that, well, at, at least with his, when he was uh, producing the band, uh, that he says yes. uh, to him it was Peter's band and, and Tony's band. He says, and everyone added flavor to that. But would you agree with that? How, what was your relationship like with Tony? Well, I think, you know, to address your, the first thing, um, you have to remember I wasn't a founder member of, of Genesis. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, the keys to the songwriting cabinet could often be guarded very closely. So, you know, you had to um, you had to deal with the idea of composition by committee. And um, it meant that everyone was auditioning their ideas. But I think that Pete obviously took a very strong role in it. I think that um, initially um, it was Anthony Phillips, my predecessor, who was the strongest character in the band. Um, and then I think through his association with Mike Rutherford, they became a team. But I, I know that, you know, Ant was was a very strong keyboard player. And I, I don't believe that Tony was prepared to um, share any keyboard parts with, with anyone else. Um, so, um, you know, there, there's this thing where obviously... Pete and um, Tony would often, you know, try and lead it. Um, Occasionally, obviously, they would relinquish control, and that's where the other guys came in, myself and Phil. Um, But, you know, founder members hold more sway than than the new boys. Um, All I can say is that sometimes what you have to do is to bring out the best in others, and I felt that that was my role with, um, with Tony. I realized he was immensely gifted, um, harmonically more more sophisticated than anybody else in the band. Uh, um, And um, I think the rest of us, you know, worked around that uh, to some degree. And I tried to have an overview of the band and I tried to think, think like a producer or or think like like, um, a publicist. Um, Various other roles of the things that you could do. Try and notice the things that other people don't notice try and be there for the cut for instance you know try and insist that we get you know the stage show uh, uh, the presentation right you know to get the mellotron get the the synth get the lights all of that and uh, uh, yeah mm-hmm. I, I would have no influence on what pete might decide to wear on, on, a, on, a, on a given e- evening whether it was going to be a fox's head or, or his wife's <laughs> dress or bat wings or or a flower that was all his department but i could say you know, in order to be able to do something like Sup is Ready, that I think I'm largely responsible for sticking together by saying I think that we, should, we could do a really long tune. I think we could make this work. Yeah. Um, uh, but I said, I, look, I'm not really prepared to do this live unless we have all the bells and whistles. There's a lot of resistance at first. And I said, no, sorry, we have to have the light show. We have to have the sound effects. We have to have the kids singing we have to have the train noises or else we are not going to retain uh, the audience's attention um so both pete and i put our foot down sometimes you have to be very unpopular to be popular but i believe it was the right move uh, right move and and, and 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 the right thing to dig my heels in sometimes you have to threaten you know um it's just the way it is most of the time i could be quite passive if, if i felt someone else was coming up with a better idea but other times I thought, no, sorry, this isn't a get even moment. It's just yeah. a case of, I know that this has got to be right. We've got to go all out. If, if every department pulls out all the stops, we can we can turn, you know, a, a song like uh, Supper's Ready into, into a triumph rather than a, oh, they wandered off to the bar. I know what I like was, was that really a jam between you and, and Phil when you when you started that off? Yeah, it, it was, um, I, I, I had a riff that the song was built on. Uh, Phil and I used to jam on it, uh, so we used to set up a groove. Uh, the other guys joined that. It, it was it was much longer originally, but we, we we whittled it down so it was verses and chords, um, typical uh, pop song format, but with a very quirky English, unobvious lyric. I think. Um, uh, I think it had. There was an aspect of, of the Beatles about it. Yeah. Um, fortunately, I think each time I got to steer that album a little bit, I, I got listened to, and um, maybe suggesting that, that, that the opening line should be in harmony 
and gave it that that stronger thing. But the, then you've got all that stuff between Pete and Phil, all that percussion stuff at the front. I suggested the drone um, uh, doubling as the kind of uh, the um, the lawnmower motor. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, it's it's kind of allegorical. It's it's got it's it's got such considering it was our first hit single it's got a most unlikely lyric yeah they i i like the fact that when i read that like like every riff you brought in basically they were used on that album right uh yeah i didn't have any ideas that, that were thrown away so uh that, that that really made um a big difference um so i think that um i i think that i didn't contribute as many songs uh to this album uh, but i contributed riffs I, I felt it was easier to impose that than to try and um, steal the keys to the songwriting cabinet. Mm-hmm. Um, and Genesis didn't always take kindly to that. So um, you could take, you, you could say that, that it's maybe closer to Jimmy Page's approach, where, where I think his approach to uh, songwriting has, has always been uh, riff driven. Uh, that wouldn't have worked with Genesis most of the time because um, harmonically, I think that, that, that Genesis was more more sophisticated. But um, and that's largely down to um, down to Tony Banks, of course. Yes. Um, and all that you know that classical um, influence. But I think that's also what made the band strong. Yeah. It's a very subtle band at times, but then you had the emerging singer, the lead singer that was to become Phil. Uh, with with um, with more for me, yeah. So it was lovely to to revisit that live and to give it a slightly more fleshed out arrangement. But it's beautiful to be able to do that song again. Make sure you comment on our video, subscribe to our channel, and share our videos. I'm John Bowden from Rocky Street Music. <laughs>